Where did all of your FPS go? That is the magical question that today we'll hopefully be providing the answers to, especially if you're thinking about getting a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, or you have a Ryzen 7000, or even an Intel CPU, where today we've got a two-part series being delivered to you guys, the first of which is looking at a particular install of Windows 11 versus Windows 10, and this is the 23H2 install, which is the latest release from Microsoft in terms of a stable uh, retail release of Windows that you can install on a USB stick. And when you install this Windows, it's really important to note this because in the next video, we're gonna be talking about particular settings pertaining to just AMD Ryzen CPUs. But when you install this, it has on by default a setting called Core Isolation. And it's important to turn this off, whereas opposed to Windows 10, when I do a fresh install of Windows, this setting is disabled by default. Now also there is a beta BIOS called Windows Insider, which has a fix applied to it called KB5041587. I believe that's off the top of my head, the right code, which I'll also be putting the links to that update in the description below. So if you're on AMD 7000 series or 9000 series, etc., you can download this update on Windows 11. It will perform on 23H2, that Windows 11 version, the same thing that 24H2 will do because the 24H2 by default has core isolation switched off as well as having the uh, update from AMD pre-installed into the OS. However, that said, we don't need any of that stuff on Windows 10, which is what I've done my benchmarking on in previous videos when I've compared the AMD Ryzen CPUs, the 9000 series to the 7000 series. And I was like, honestly guys, I was because I was in a bit of a sandbox over the last couple of months because I was in Japan and I just had a lot going on. I was in a sandbox, so I was kind of confused as to why there was just such negative reviews surrounding the Ryzen 9000 series. When I was looking at my own test, I was like, this is like mediocre. It's not great, but it's not terrible. So I think today's video will hopefully explain a lot of what's been happening, perhaps in terms of results that you've been seeing across the board being inconsistent, as well as in terms of what I would do personally, I'll make some recommendations, but this will be again, the two part series. Today, we're looking at the first of the benchmarks, which is core isolation. Now this setting unfortunately affects the 9000 series actually much more significantly than it affects say Intel CPUs or it affects the 7800X 3D or the 7700X. However, let's get on with these benchmarks where we'll show you guys not just the bar graphs, but also side-by-side -side comparisons. So if you've got say the same hardware as I'm using in some of these tests, you can compare it against your own test results and see maybe perhaps you need to tune your system more or you can say, okay, well, my system's running right. But we'll show you all that right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and let's show you guys the first two games we actually tested a lot of different CPUs here in the forms of the 7700X as well as the 9700X, the 7800X 3D and the 14700KF. Now for these CPUs, I did use the respective ASRock motherboards. It's more of a high-end motherboard I've used for all CPUs here and it's 6200 megahertz of CL28 timings on G-Skill memory. However, with the 17, however, with the 14700KF, I did clock it down to 5.5 gigahertz and disable the E cores because that's pretty much what I'm doing with all the Intel 13th and 14th generation CPUs when I sell them now, just so they don't come back with issues in the form of degradation or people having problems. I'm finding this has been a good solution to keep the voltages safe for Intel CPUs. But Let's uh, get back on track here to the results where we'll show you guys Cyberpunk 2077 as well 
as the Gears of War 5. These two games showed the biggest differences for the 9700X in particular, so I decided to test the other CPUs, the three ones that you'll see in the bar graphs here, against the 9700X. And what I found with Core Isolation here was with a Windows 11 default install versus the, say, 7700X, we were seeing on Cyberpunk 2077 a massive performance decrease versus the Windows 10 install I had of roughly 29% versus the 7700X that was 14% and then versus the 7800X 3D that was only 10%. I mean only 10% is still actually really bad but then if we look at the 14700KF which I've just separated in a separate graph on its own uh, as to just not make the results totally uh, Confucius it's just really, if there's too much numbers on the screen, that's how I personally want to look at graphs. If there's just too much on there, I just sort of go, what, what's going on here? So I decided to give the Intel one a separate graph and that's losing 11% in Cyberpunk 2077. It is important to note, and another reason why I separated the Intel CPU, it's important to note here that Windows 11 did perform better in games for the Intel CPU than Windows 10 versus the Ryzen CPUs. And the reason for this, and we're already seeing a trend emerge here, and this is where I'm gonna talk about part of the problem. Windows 11, the scheduler has been designed for Intel's older lake, that's 12th generation, and also the next two generations, 13th and 14th gen. And we can evidence this by just a simple slide from Intel, just bragging about how the scheduler was redesigned in Windows for their CPUs. So when they redesign a scheduler for their CPUs, the competition CPUs, uh, at a detriment here, and that's a clear example of the next game that we'll show here too, and that's Gears 5, where we're losing on the 7700X 8% performance. The 7800X 3D has now a 7% performance degradation, but the 9700X then drops down 22%, going from that beautiful Windows 10 install down to a default Windows 11 install, and then we have the Intel results, which we'll move over to as well. And that's the 14700KF. That's at a 9% performance loss in Gears 5. So you can see a trend already emerging here, and that is the 9700X has suffered worse from having this core isolation setting enabled than the other CPUs, whether it's Ryzen 7000 or it's the Intel 14700KF. So those two games out of the way, I decided to add in a heap more CPUs, do a heap more testing, and it does take a long time to do all this testing and then analyze the results and present the numbers to you guys. So if you guys can, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up as well because we've got, again, another video coming after this talking about what I feel is happening here. But one thing I can tell you with certainty after testing these games as well as looking at other games, Core isolation on Windows 11, especially because it's on by default, this affects the Ryzen 9000 series more so than it affects Ryzen 7000, as well as Intel's uh, i7-14700KF, for example. However, one thing to see was that the 7800X 3D suffered the least amount of performance hit when it came to comparing it to the other CPUs. So I guess the 7800X 3D in ways is almost sort of immune to all this stuff, which is good to see. It's the most popular selling CPUs. But I guess for future reference, if there's problems that come out with these kinds of things, then it's good to know that the 7800X 3D is gonna fare the best since it's one of the top recommended CPUs, not just in the world right now, but at Tech Your City too. However, let's move on now to four other games to see how the 9700X in particular is affected by this core isolation, as well as Windows 11 with core isolation off versus Windows 10. And here's where we're gonna look at Age of Mythology. And we saw a performance drop from the best case scenario on Windows 10 to the worst case scenario of 12%. Though on to Far Cry 6, here is where the best case scenario of the 9700X on Windows 10 versus the core isolation on, on Windows 11, we saw a performance hit of 15.5%. So that's the kind of performance you're gonna lose in this title. Then moving on to Baldur's Gate 3, this was the, I guess, least impactful of all the results here, suffering an 11% loss going from best case to worst case scenario. Then onto our final title here, Harry Potter, we are losing 17% 
from going from Windows 10 down to Windows 11 with the default install and core isolation turned on. And so with these numbers, guys, as we said before, we'll just show you the side-by-side -side comparisons as well. So you can see the numbers in real time, as well as in the graphs, we're detailing what settings we use in these games. So the best thing you can take away from this with your computer is I would heavily recommend if you're on Ryzen CPUs to use Windows 10. Sure, the OS might not look as beautiful as Windows 11, but over a year ago, I switched back to Windows 10. It might even be actually like a year and a half ago now, <laughs> but I started having a lot of issues with Windows 11 and it was due to the performance that I was experiencing, not just in games, but outside of games, where I personally found things were extremely sluggish and I also experienced that on my fresh install, even from the get-go, it's almost remnant of Windows Vista for me. That's how bad Windows 11 is getting after I see the progress it's making here in terms of going downwards in giving you lower performance on your CPUs, as well as causing all these issues out there in the benchmarking community at this point in time. If you guys are new to PC gaming and you don't know what Windows Vista was, it was actually the operating system that came out in between Windows XP and Windows 7, and it was sluggish, and it was really bad in terms of being a resource hog, especially versus Windows XP, and it, I think I installed it once, and then I never went back, because I felt how bad it was straight away, and Windows XP just felt a lot better. Of course, then Windows 7 came out, and that was much better. So now we've done the first round of results. In the second video, we're gonna talk about AMD-specific settings, but this core isolation setting itself made such a big impact on gaming, especially on Ryzen 9000, that I felt it deserved its own video in itself, and you may be wondering, what is core isolation? Well, it's actually a virtual-based security feature where it separates the core processes in the memory and it protects you from potential malware threats. Though over the years, I've found the best protection you can have on your computer is just simply not clicking on things you don't know where they came from. So if you get an email from some unknown source and it has a, a, an attachment in it and you don't know what that is, do not click on it. Just ignore the email and delete it. Trust me, you'll be better off in the long run. <laughs> and my, because for instance, my dad, dad man, he's, um, you guys love him featuring him on the channel sometimes. He's a sucker for malware. He just gets an email. He's like, oh, wow, I'm going to win a million dollars from some dude I've never met on the internet. Sure, I'll click this link. I'll open it up. And I've had to fix his computer so many times from malware. <laughs> that perhaps on his PC, core isolation might be a good thing. It might save me a reinstall of Windows. And I mean, on his PC, core isolation could mean the difference of me reinstalling his PC every couple of months to maybe reinstalling his PC every six months. So it, your mileage may vary with this setting. For me personally, I never click on any of that stuff. I don't go to dodgy websites. And so if you're in a similar boat to what I am, I'm going to get the performance benefits of leaving core isolation off. And in this case, when I'm showing uh, products, I'm gonna show them in their best performing situation when it comes to software, because ultimately I do feel like the AMD situation so far is hit or miss, right? I think they did an okay job with Zen 5, although I agree with what a lot of you guys say, it should have been called Zen 4 Plus. But in ways I also feel sorry for them in that they've had to jump through so many hurdles now with all these Windows issues that's affecting their 9000 series much more than it's affecting other CPUs, at least from what I'm showing here in my testing. And that's just with core isolation. In the next video, we are going to get onto the KB5041587 update, which is an update on Windows 11 specifically to fix the scheduler issues with Windows 11 in relation to AMD's Ryzen 9000 series, but it also does help out a little bit for Ryzen 7000. So do stay tuned for that video, but in part one here, guys, we're gonna conclude this and basically say that core isolation is a huge detriment for, to performance on AMD Ryzen CPUs, as well as Intel CPUs too. But also another thing we can take out of this is that Windows 11 performs better for Intel's CPUs than it does for AMD CPUs. Anyhow, I'll see you guys in part two. 
do stay tuned. And if you haven't already and you're loving this content, then you know what to do. Hit that sub button, ring the bell. You get the videos as soon as they drop. But also let us know in the comment section below what you think of these results. Are you seeing similar things when you turn on or off or core isolation? As well as another bonus that we'll throw in before I get on out of here is we'll mention this in the next video too. I decided to test an alpha build of Windows 11. This is in the, what they call the canary dev line here. So I managed to get my hands on uh, a, the, the latest of latest builds. And this one actually then had core isolation on by default. So one thing you'll definitely wanna do with your PC is just type in core isolation. And you can check if this is turned off in Windows by just typing in the setting and it'll either be on or off. But another thing too is with the latest updates, there's also, these are the unreleased Windows versions by the way, there's another setting in security there that apparently fixes AMD's security uh, wormhole. There's another security flaw in the AMD CPUs apparently, and this is actually turned off by default for Intel CPUs, but it's enabled for AMD CPUs. And again, guys, the, the list of new things that happen here and the performance degradation that you're seeing, especially when we compare that to especially when we compare that to the uh, specter and meltdown stuff that happened years ago. I mean, it, man, have you guys noticed a trend here? Like I'm noticing a trend and that is over the last few years, there's just so many of these issues and security patches that are now po propping up. And of course, the latest and greatest CPUs are now immune to it. Anyway, with all that aside, enough rambling. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.